Hey there, fellow garden enthusiasts. Today, we're going to have an honest chat about something every gardener experiences at some point. The plants we won't be growing again. Yep, you heard that, right? In this video, we're going to spill the beans on some plants that just didn't quite make the cut in our gardens. So grab a seat, maybe a cup of tea, and let's dive in. All right, let's start with one of the most common culprits, mint. Now, don't get me wrong. Mint is fantastic for adding a refreshing kick to drinks and dishes. But let me tell you, it can be a bit of a garden bully. This stuff spreads like wildfire. No matter how much you try to contain it, it always finds a way to take over your garden beds. So, as much as I love a good mojito, I've had to say goodbye to growing mint in my garden. Next up, we have the notorious tomato hornworm magnet, the tomato plant. Now, before you tomato lovers come after me with pitchforks, let me explain. Tomatoes are fantastic when they're thriving, but they can be quite finicky. From pests like hornworms to diseases like blight, growing tomatoes can sometimes feel like an uphill battle. And let's not forget about the constant need for pruning and staking. So, while I appreciate a juicy homegrown tomato as much as the next person, I've decided to give my garden a break from these high-maintenance plants. The epitome of summer sweetness, right? Well, not necessarily in my garden. As much as I adore the taste of freshly picked strawberries, I found that they require a bit more TLC than I can give. Between fending off hungry critters and battling fungal diseases, growing strawberries can be quite the challenge. Plus, they tend to take up a lot of space for just a handful of berries. So, while I'll still indulge in store-bought strawberries, I'll be skipping them in my garden for now. Basil. Oh, Basil. How I wanted to love you. But alas, you proved to be quite the diva in my garden. Despite my best efforts to keep you happy with plenty of sunlight and well-drained soil, you always seem to wilt at the slightest hint of stress. And let's not even talk about your susceptibility to pests like aphids and whiteflies. So, as much as I adore the aroma of fresh basil, I've decided to save myself the heartache and opt for more resilient herbs in my garden. Last but not least, we have cucumbers. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing quite like biting into a crisp, homegrown cucumber on a hot summer day. But for some reason, cucumbers and I just never seem to see eye to eye. Whether it's battling powdery mildew or struggling to climb trellises, growing cucumbers always feels like an uphill battle. Plus, they tend to take up a lot of space in the garden, which can be a precious commodity. So, while I'll still enjoy cucumbers from the farmer's market, I'll be giving them a pass in my own garden. And there you have it, folks. Those are just a few of the plants that won't be making a comeback in my garden. But hey, gardening is all about trial and error, right? So don't be afraid to experiment and find out what works best for you. Who knows, maybe one day I'll give these plants another shot. Until then, happy gardening.